what's going on everyone? This is Tony with rchelp.com. Today, we're going to be setting up the Max Pro Fly Barless uh, Gyro, and Heli Direct reached out to me, and I got to give a huge thanks to Sam and James. Uh, they sent me the gyro. I ended up having a problem with my BK servos. Uh, one, one of them ended up smoking, so they sent me a full set of cyclic servos and a new tail servo. So... It's been a long time, guys. It's been a really long time, and we we need to get the goblin in the air. So everything that I have pretty much here, uh, from the cyclic servos, the tail servos, the helicopter kit, the tool kit sitting over here, the ESC, all of that is going to be linked down in the description. They are not affiliate links. I'm making no money off of this. They just sent me the servos and the gyro and the program card for the gyro. And wanted me to do a video on it. And I greatly appreciate Heli Direct for doing that for me. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive into it. And if I switch over here to the screen here, you can see that I do have the program open. Uh, it is disconnected right now because I do not have the uh, USB cable in the gyro. So just a quick overview. Uh, this is an all aluminum case gyro. It does have a micro USB port. You can use dual spectrum satellites on it. I didn't want to cut any of these wires, so I just kind of did my little springy thing on them. Um, I do have all three of the cyclics plugged in, and I do have the ESC plugged in. This single wire is going to be the governor, but since I'm running a heli, or a heli direct, since I'm running a hobby wing ESC, I'm not going to use the governor in here, but I didn't want this wire just flopping around. It ain't going to hurt anything uh, sitting in there like that. This port over here is going to be for the program card, and we will look at that at a later time. Now, you do see that I do have the blades on there, and this blade's crooked and it's bugging me. I do have my motor unplugged. I have two of the three wires unplugged, which means this motor will not spin. So definitely play it safe, guys. Uh, on your tail servo, do not plug your tail servo in until you get to the tail servo uh, menu within that program right there so once we come over here to tail and then we set what it is uh default is showing as 1520 i believe it's going to default to 760 but just in case guys because this is a 760 uh microsecond servo so just in case leave it unplugged until you come in here and set and by the way the servo we're going to be running is a 760 microsecond at 560 hertz we also might go into the uh, esc and set the bec to a higher voltage because all of these servos are made uh, for high voltage 8.4 volts all right so while we're on this screen here i'm going to go ahead and go over to the start menu and this is what the icon looks like whenever you uh, download it that goes on your desktop so i'm going to pull that up just so i can see it over the helicopter all right, so we'll come back over here, and as you can see, I do have this loose. I need to put those screws in there so that we can set it up. I'm not able to find, uh, like on the 3GX, you had a DIR mode. Uh, on the Micro Beast and the Beast X, you had menu G, which would turn off the gyros. I cannot find a way to turn the gyro off on this ESC, so... <laughs> I'm uh, basically setting it up as close as I possibly can, and that's about all we can do. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to plug the micro USB cable into the gyro, and you're going to see uh, down here, this is going to go from uh, disconnected to connected. And if I put it up on something different, I have already went through this uh, twice, as a matter of fact, and I didn't like the way the video turned out, so I'm shooting it again. <laughs> so go ahead and plug that in. Got to plug the battery in as well. You heard it connect, and you saw it go from hard 3D down to beginner. Uh, like I mentioned, I have went through this uh, a couple times already, but I just didn't like the way the videos are turning out. Apparently, it's been a long time since I've made a video. So, uh, it did go down to beginner. I want to try all of these, uh, and that's why I put it on beginner. Just start here, because it's been over a year and a half since I've flown. Uh, could probably start here or here, uh, one of those two, and it would be fine. But I just go ahead and start from the bottom and work my way up. Down here... This is going to be your blade size. So if you have an Align 450, don't select this over here. You need to select a 325 because it has 325 millimeter blades. All right, so we're on beginner. We are on 380 because this is a Goblin 380. We're going to come up here, uh, RXTX, and I got to get my DX9. And let's lower the throttle, turn it on. All right, so we do have it on. All right, so now that we have that on, uh, this menu here, you want to make these red dots match what your radio is doing. 
So right and left aileron, uh, forward and back on the elevator, up and down on the throttle. If they're not correct and they need to be reversed, you need to go into your radio and reverse it in there. So what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna watch this number right down here. And that number there, I wanna get to zero because zero is gonna be center position. And it is unbelievably twitchy. All right, so I do have zero. Uh, we can come back over here. Let me get the helicopter out the way. And then on the radio, if we come down here to monitor, you can see that my throttle channel is at zero and I am at mid stick, even though the white lines aren't quite showing up, <laughs> but we are at mid stick. So that's where we need to be because we need to set the center on our servos here. And those blades are <laughs> really annoying. I've already got one scratch in my monitors. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to set all the servos to as close to center as we can. I have already powered this on and I got the arms installed as close as I could. And then I put it on the helicopter. So now what we need to do is we need to let it just sit there and wait for it to kind of level out and then come on down and then look and try to line up uh, exactly 90 degrees. And if I turn this over... Hopefully that won't affect it too much, but I have my uh, elevator servo right there that you guys can barely see, uh, but I do have it pretty centered. All right, so we'll go ahead and come back over here. If you're running uh, Spectrum DSM-2 or DSMX satellite receivers, you can select that from the drop-down menu. It's going to give you an option here, DSM-2 or DSMX. I am running DSMX, but for some reason it keeps defaulting back to DSM-2. Uh, it kind of is what it is. Uh, this, I kind of feel that this is kind of an early access. Uh, I haven't heard much about the Max Flybarless gyros, but uh, you can click bind, unplug your helicopter, plug it back in, and it'll put your uh, satellite receivers into bind mode. Down here, you're going to select your, uh, your mode. And then here, once you set your transmitter to mid stick, you can click this. Again, I've already done it. You can click that, and it will set the center to these guys here. That way, the gyro knows where center is on your radio and as you can see up here we are at 15 20 microsecond which is the centering pulse width all right so now we're going to come over to sensor uh it's going to default to this first one uh as you can see on the helicopter we do have uh label facing up wires forward uh, or wires in the front so on this program here we do want the wire the top facing up so top up wires front so i do have that selected and that is all we need to do in here. All right, so from there, we're gonna go into our swash. Now, this one I'm not 100% sure of because there is no directional arrow. It does not say which way is forward or which way is backwards. For most helicopters, uh, this is gonna be towards the back is the way most of these are gonna be. But when I selected this one with the elevator in the front, which is the way the goblins are, it didn't quite work right. So I had to select this one and I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, why it's doing it that way. Another thing that we're going to get into on this is over here in collective. And as you can see here, swash plate go up, pitch negative. That's where I have that set. That's where I had to set it because this is the only collective uh, reversal that I could find in this program. So we'll get to that in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. So select whichever one of these you have. Likely it'll be one of these two. And just for giggles, I'm going to go ahead and put it over here on this one. And let's just check. Okay, that's why I did it. So if I come back over here. So now whenever I go forward on the swash, it's going back. Whenever I go back on the swash, it's going forward. That's going to be the reason that I had to choose this one here because it would not let me reverse it unless I chose this one, even though my elevator's in the front. Uh, I, I don't quite understand that. But uh, over here in the advanced menu, uh, if you need to phase your swash plate, you can phase your swash plate. So just click the buttons, whichever way you need to go. If you don't know what phasing is, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, you, uh, cyclic ring is checked by default. Uh, you can leave cyclic ring. Basically, if you move your stick to the uh, fullest extent, it's going to make a square. And what this is going to do 
is down at like bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left. It's going to keep the servos from binding because the swash plate goes uh, on a round axis and not a square axis, so it can bind up. So I do leave cyclic ring uh, put on there. You know, diagonal movements, you'll have to move it a little bit more. It's almost like there'll be a little bit of expo in those, but that's absolutely not a problem. So that's the only thing in here. Clockwise rotating uh, main blades, which you can also select over here. So most of them are going to be clockwise. The goblins uh, clockwise. If yours is counterclockwise, then select this one over here. All right, so we come over to servos. And this one took me a little bit to kind of kind of figure out. Um, it's Usually there's a plus and minus. And I'm going to tell you, going one step at a time by, you know, coming in, deleting, putting a one, and then hit enter, uh, that can get kind of... Uh, kind of annoying especially when you're trying to you know do a rough estimate which you can just grab it and move it but as you hear there's no movement i'll move the mic closer to the helicopter so there's no movement but if you just mouse over it uh top or bottom and then scroll your wheel you can go one by one and for some reason now it's not letting me go one by one, and that's weird. All right, there it goes. So I had to put in a manual number and then start doing this. All right, so if I put my mouse here and then start scrolling my wheel down, it uh, like I said, there's some quirks. And if you need to reverse your servo, you can do that in here. All you got to do is click it, and then it'll say switch to reverse direction. That's going to reverse that servo. Uh, obviously, I don't want to. Uh, I want all of mine in the normal orientation because that's what's working for me. As you can see, I do have the stock BK servo arms on these servos. They did come with aluminum arms, but I don't have a tap uh, the size of the threads that are on the balls. So I just went ahead and used the stock SAB servo arms. And as you can see here, uh, this one is actually my aileron servo. This one is my pitch servo. And then this one's my elevator servo. I'm not sure why these two up here are switched to where this one's aileron on the left, which is aileron supposed to be on the right, but that's just kind of the way it is. One thing it does say over here, auto swash trim for Piro. Uh, push button on the max fly ballers before flight. If we come back over here, we have a small hole right here in front of this four port plug. There's a button in there and there's not a lot of information on that button. This is about the only thing that says what to do with that button. So uh, push the button on the max fly bar list before flight, take off and do a fast tail rate Piro hover for more than 10 seconds. Uh, if you're like me and you're not a 3D pilot, this is kind of intimidating, but uh, this is supposed to have perfect tail Piros. We're definitely going to find out. <laughs> All right, uh, land and then push the button on the fly baller's uh, gyro again, and it'll save the new swash trim value. So basically, once it goes up in the air, you do a pyro, it's going to find out where the wobble is or whatever. I'm not sure exactly what it does because there's not a lot of documentation, but it's going to set a new, new trim rate and get the helicopter to where it just flies. So if it is that simple, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Over here in the advanced menu, uh, we can select our uh, servos. If you're running analog servos, please give me a call. I would like to talk to you. Uh, so always select digital servos. Uh, swash trim, and then you have your max collective, min collective, and then your cyclic. We're not worrying about any of this because it is in the advanced, and we do have a collective menu up here. All right. So speaking to that collective menu, over here, again, in order for me to get my throttle stick to match positive and negative pitch, on this helicopter and I know my uh, blade grips are on right this helicopter has a leading edge on the control arm so <laughs> you know it you just it, it's what I had to do and I, I don't understand it but I had to put it to where uh, swash plate goes up I get negative pitch but in fact swash plate goes up I'm getting positive pitch so this should not matter it's not changing anything in the gyro about corrections or anything like that now this is also the menu where you're going to select your collective travel. And just in case you need a refresher on collective pitch travel, um, I need to get my tail boom out the way here. Put that back there. We need to move this over here. Uh, we're not going to worry about that gyro tipping over like that. We need to put it to where either the front of the nose or the tail 
is facing you because this helicopter has a really, I mean, it rakes down really good. So we do need to have it facing forward because left or right, it is perfectly vertical. Now, one thing I can't show is the front. My camera won't come down here in front of me. Uh, but if we get our Align uh, digital pitch gauge out, so I did have to bend my blade so it doesn't hit my monitor back there. And of course, this thing's going to make a lot of noise because that blade's hanging off the edge. But this is demonstration purposes only. Slide your, slide your gauge all the way up, you know, and as far as you possibly can so you can get close just in case there is any kind of warpage in that blade. Another thing you want to do, take this, turn it on. And then set it on here and then hit uh, once you... Once you have it to where it stops bouncing around, hit your zero button. And there we go. So we do have, well, I had zero, but it's not going to read it uh, with it like this. And then from there, what we want to do, and let me go ahead and put these blades back out straight so the servos will shut up. <laughs> what you want to do there is you want to adjust your travel positive which is going to be your positive pitch and you want to adjust your travel negative which is your negative pitch uh stick all the way up throttle all the way up again unplug your motor guys uh stick all the way up select this one i set mine to 12 degrees and then stick all the way down you set this one again you can well you should be able to scroll your wheel but for some reason, it's not letting me do it. So we'll put a four in there, hit enter. Let's see if it'll let me do it now. Nope. Interesting. It was letting me do it before. Uh, I'm not sure what changed. I, I'm really not. But anyway, this is how you uh, set your collective pitch, your full pitch. Come over here into the advanced menu. And again, you just have your cyclic trim. You can see I do have mine on two. So mine wasn't wasn't quite giving me the reading that I wanted, so I did put it at a two. Now the pitch pump is automatically selected. I left it selected, and it automatically has a value of fifty. We're gonna see how that works. The pitch pump it should be kind of like an elevator pre comp, to where whenever you give full collective either up or down, uh, the tail's gonna want to either drop whenever you're going up, or it's gonna want to raise when you're going down. So this is likely going to add or subtract a little bit of elevator to try to keep that helicopter perfectly level. I'm going to leave it right where they had it. All right, so now we're going to go from the collective and we're going to come into the cyclic. And this is basically all your limits. And this little guy right here, uh, we're going to talk about. All right, so get those servos to shut up again. You're going to have your limit, your agility, your gain, your roll rate, and your flip rate. Again, over here on start, we selected beginner. So let's uh, let's just take a look. 100, 160, 280, 270. 100, 160, 280, 270. Interesting. I figured these would have changed, uh, but they did not. All right. So like I mentioned, we're going to start from the bottom. We're just going to work our way up. So we'll come back over here and cyclic after we select beginner again. Uh, so I'm going to leave all this alone. I'm not going to touch it because these are default values and I want to see what default values do. So we'll just, we'll have to see. So I've been sitting here playing with this and I'm not sure why after I change this value that it only goes green under 75. Um, I don't quite understand that. The other thing is it will not let me shut off the gyros that are inside the gyro. That way I can get a direct reading of where the servos are. Instead... If we come over here, and if I move the helicopter, it's still trying to uh, to correct. And to me, that just doesn't make sense. So uh, definitely a learning curve here, uh, but I'm not sure why it's red. I'm going to leave it on 100. That's where it was defaulted. All right, so now down to this little uh, ellipsis. This is your PID gains. These are the default values. Uh, I have never in my life left an I gain at zero uh, because I is basically your fine tune. And P gain your, is your uh, rough tune, fine tune. And then this is essentially, I mean, there's a lot more to it, trust me. But essentially, this is how fast it can make it do it. Um, and if you raise it up too high, it can start burning stuff up. 
the manual says to leave this at 5050 and that's where we're going to leave it so if i come back over here let's go ahead and click on the uh, advanced button up here you have your rc deadband elevator pre-comp so elevator pre-comp we did see what or what i think is elevator pre-comp right here and as you can see the value is the same so let's change that to 51 and now let's come over here and elevator pre-comp stayed at 50 so apparently they don't have any correlation with each other very interesting and you do have a paddle simulation uh, that you can set here again not a lot of information on this but we're going to go out we're going to test it and we're going to see how it does uh, paddle simulation from zero to a hundred Elevator pre-comp 0 to 100, and then RC deadband 0 to 25. Uh, you have your percent expo. I don't ever put expo on here. If I'm going to run expo, it's going to be in my radio because all that's doing is telling the – you're only telling the gyro how far to move the servos, and if you put expo in your radio, it's not going to hurt the gyro. So I run it. If you feel comfortable running it, fantastic. There's some people that absolutely will not run it, and they'll put their expo in here. It's completely up to you. All right, so now it's time to move on to the tail, and this part I have not gotten to. As you can see, this is defaulted to 763.33. I don't know about the trim. I don't know about the reversal, and I haven't set uh, the travel counterclockwise or clockwise. I'm not actually 100% sure. I think this is going to be the throw to kind of trim it out on, you know, max left, max right. Uh, definitely some different wording there, so... I would like to see them get a different type of wording uh, on this tail. So for this, what I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to put a tail on the helicopter so that we can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that on, and then we will get right back with this uh, tail servo setup. All right, so I do have the tail put on. I did put the nylon bolt in here, and I did bolt down the, uh, the gyro. I am going to have to take that back off because over here on this side, uh, you do have a couple holes for wire management, and these wires that are in here are just a little too close to this belt uh, for my comfort. So, but that's, we're not worried about that right now. I can always take this uh, tail off and do this at any time. Uh, this is just wire management to keep things away from interfering. So what we need to do now is we need to plug in this tail servo. And if we come back over here, uh, as you can see, we are set on 760.333. We need 760. 560 hertz which is what this tail servo uh is designed for all right come back over here so what we're going to do is we're going to take just one of our allen drivers that has the smooth shank on it not one that has a step and we're just going to roll this guy up uh i'm not cutting any servo wires at least not yet you guys know me and my ocd in like perfect wire management and whatnot uh we're not going to do this on do that on this one so I changed from the icon, which has wires coming out the front, to the Max Fly Barless Gyro with wires coming out the top. And that little bit of a difference, I ain't kidding you, it's about that much on servo length. That much made me uh, have to redo the wires in the servos. So, come in here, grab both ends, give it a little twist, back it off to release it, and then pull it out. And there we go. So now... We need to come over like that. And there we go. And again, I have not set this. Uh, what you want to do, get this helicopter flipped around here. Not a lot of room on here. You want to set this arm to where it's just straight up and down to where uh, the parallel is on the boom. So right now, it's pretty close. It could stand to go backwards just a little bit, but right there is really, really close. So now that I know that it is close, uh, what I can do is I can reach in here and I can grab the, uh, the rod that goes back to the tail blades and go ahead and get that snapped on. All right, now I need to get the tail blades. All right, so for centering the tail, what I like to do is just fold these tail blades in and that'll get you really really close to where you need to be on the center as you can see here uh we are a little bit off uh <laughs> you might be able to see that we are on very limited space here so let me get that turned around there you go so we can see that we do need to adjust it and what we can do is we can come back over here 
And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adjusting this trim. I'm just going to be going down or I'm going to be going up. One of the two. And that's all I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be clicking. That's it. So come back over here to where you guys can see this. And then we'll go ahead. Right there looks really good, which is negative 30 on here. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to bring them back out. And remember, on this top blade, the trailing edge is facing you guys. The trailing edge on this blade is away from you guys. All right, so now what we're going to do, now that we got those straight, is we're going to go right rudder, and we're going to check it. Uh, whenever you go right rudder, the trailing edge should go to the right. And right rudder, it goes to the right. Left rudder, it goes to the left. I do notice that my uh, tail extent, uh, how far it, it does go, is a little off. But what that means is we don't have to come in here and reverse the tail servo. So all four servos are in their normal direction. So I'm going to get my get my radio over here. This is getting more and more difficult to do. <laughs> I am seriously running out of room trying to keep all this stuff in view for you guys. Let's see, let's get that turned back to where you guys can kind of see the tail blade. All right, so I've been sitting here playing with this tail. If we come back over here, you can see my settings in here. I've basically got both of these bottomed out. And what we're going to do is I'm going to adjust both of these, and I'll tell you counterclockwise on the left, clockwise on the right. Uh, I'll tell you which one I'm doing, and you'll be able to see what I'm doing right here. So if I can keep it in frame, which is, again becoming increasingly more difficult all right so we are going to go to the right which i'm going to the right if you're looking at it from the top that's clockwise but if i move it it's not doing anything it's just twitching but if i move the counterclockwise as you can see it is going up all right so now we're doing the clockwise Just starts to bind. Go ahead and back it off a bit. Now that, that's interesting right there. Let's go ahead and switch back over so you can see what I think is interesting. 120 on the counterclockwise, 75 on the clockwise, and then negative 30 on the trim. It's almost like they're expecting the actual slider, the slider here. It's almost like they're expecting that to be centered, uh, which I guess would kind of make sense because that would give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of pitch on there at center so i'll tell you what let's give it a try let's see what happens so pretty much zero is centered okay so i want to come and what i did there let me switch back over to to the menu or the program here i put this one back at zero on the trim so now i'm going to adjust counterclockwise and then i'm going to adjust clockwise again so let's go there's this is going to be the clockwise or the right menu. And as you can see, I do, I can go a little bit more. Just started binding. Back it off a few. I was able to bring it up to 90 on that one. Now on the counterclockwise, I am, I'm going to lower that because I know it's going to bind really bad. All right. So we'll go full, full right rudder. And then we'll just bring it up until it starts binding and then back it off. All right. So with that setting, if we come over here, I've got 105 and 90 now. So it's a little closer. It's a little closer. And we have a little bit of positive pitch uh, to try to counteract the uh, rotation of the main blades. So we're going to go ahead and leave it there. Uh, we are on 560, which is where it needs to be. Uh, by the way, this does auto save whenever you do uh, anything. Uh, as far as the tail gain, that is done in your radio. Uh, and it is on the gear channel or channel 5. So that's just like every other gyro out there. All right. So yaw rate gain. Uh, this, if I mouse over this and hold it, this is the advanced mode or advanced menu. Uh, we have acceleration, stop gain, expo, yaw rate gain. Uh, how many degrees per second on the yaw rate. Uh, then we have default to select all these back to default and then advance, which is, again, your PID for your tail. And again, they say 50050, and that's where we're going to leave it. 
what's funny is you have to click that and then you have to click this to get into here but then you click the back to try to get to this menu and you can't get it's it's very weird um i do think there is going to be some more updates on this program to get it to uh, get a little more functionality in it get a little more information over here all right and now that the tail's set up Governor, we're not going to be running a governor uh, because I'm going to run the governor that's in the uh, Hobby Wing ESC. And then you have your, your log. So this is basically just a log of everything that happened. Again, I want to thank Sam and James from Heli Direct for sending the gyro, sending the program card, the three cyclic servos, and the tail servo over uh, for me to do these videos on. Uh, huge thanks to you guys over there. And I did ask them for a sticker pack just so I could stick her up. The helicopter and they're staying on there they're not coming off uh you can get the helicopter at heli direct you can get the servos you can get the gyro you can get the esc you can get batteries blades motor you can get everything on here including these tools guys if you don't have a good set of tools get these scorpion tools because it's a buy once cry once excellent excellent investment uh so i'll have a lot of links down in the description for you guys to go check out so for right now, after all that set up, all we got to do is the maiden flight. And I just got to find time to get outside and actually put this thing in the air and hope I still know how to fly a helicopter after a year and a half, uh, a little over actually. So until that time, guys, that's pretty much it on the setup. You know, the usual YouTube stuff, click the subscribe thingamajigger and click the bell thing because everybody likes hearing the hearing the charity bell ringing uh, in front of Walmart. And I just want to thank you guys for watching. You guys have yourself a great day. We'll see you guys in the next video.